We have a lot to talk about. McKnight at the movies because it's Thursday. Jesse Rogers has a baseball update. Cubs, White Sox both lose yesterday. Bulls down to their final three. There's all kinds of stuff happening, but the big news in the country today is the passing of O.J. Simpson at 76 after a battle with prostate cancer. By the early 90s, O.J. Simpson was easily one of the most famous, recognizable celebrities in this country. I am too young to remember O.J.'s playing career, but as a young kid growing up in the 80s, as a sports fan, you couldn't help but know about the legend of O.J. Simpson at USC with the Buffalo Bills. And all I heard as a kid was, you didn't get to see one of the greatest ever, you know, O.J. Simpson. By the time I knew who O.J. Simpson was, the legend of O.J. Simpson was this great football player. He was a television pitch man. NBC Sports. He was on NBC Sports. He was running through airports, jumping over luggage, using right. his great running back skills for Hertz, Hertz Renicar. Rent -a yeah. He was a movie star because of the Naked Gun trilogy. He was a movie star. Yes. Because of that trilogy and the Abrams brothers putting him in that first uh, Naked Gun. Towering Inferno. Towering he Inferno, in too. Towering that's true. Inferno. Good point, Yerk. He was a super celebrity. Right, Yerk? You'd agree. Absolutely. He was a super celebrity Absolutely. in this country. And then he flushed it all down the drain. And everything changed in 1994 and in the subsequent years. And it's unlike almost any story, or I don't even know what the comparable would be, to be quite honest. Someone who was that high, who was that famous, who was that great at his chosen profession, who had then made the segue into media and was quite good. As Yerko said, as... As, a, as, a, as a, a sports commentator, as a pitch man, as a star in Hollywood. I mean, there aren't many people that can make that kind of transition. And then to have the double murder and the trial and everything else that came along with it. There's really nothing else like the life and times of O.J. Simpson. Let's face it. Nothing that I can think of. And by 1994, by the fall of 1994, Yurko. Yes. This is three months after the chase, right? Yeah. Was it June 17th, 1994? I believe you're right. And we can get into that day in a little bit. They did a whole 30 for 30 on that day they alone. Did, yeah. Because it's crazy, kind of incredible. Crazy day. Three months later, uh, by, the, by the fall of 1994, the most popular show on television was Seinfeld. TV was a lot different back then. There wasn't as much, obviously. There, there just wasn't. The... But Seinfeld was the most popular show on television. And one of the early episodes of that fall season launch was the famous Big Salad episode. But in the episode of the Big Salad was the spoof of the O.J. Chase, where Kramer was golfing with a fictitious former Yankee by the name of Steve Gendison. And they argued about a rule on the golf course, and Steve Gendison would later go on to kill a dry cleaner. <laughs> you can't, I mean, like, Seinfeld was spoofing the Bronco chase three months later. The most popular show on television at the time was spoofing the chase three months later. And what subsequently followed over the next year plus, Yerk, I don't even know how to explain to people circus. that aren't old enough. Circus, circus. thank circus. you. That's the word. Yeah. You nailed it. Yurko just nailed it in one word. Circus. It was a circus. 100% absolutely. He wins the criminal case, loses a later civil case right. where he owes the Brown family money. So, and then after that, it's just disgrace. Yes. O.J. Simpson, he won the criminal case, but nobody believed that he didn't do it. Right. You know, even his own lawyers knew that he had done it. Of course. Everybody he, knows he did he it. He wins the... <laughs> And it was spoofed later on, too, and if, if it doesn't fit, you must quit. <laughs> well, they did. They Kramer spoofed, did that, You're too, right. They spoofed right? that, too. Seinfeld yeah. spoofed it a couple yeah, times. That's exactly. a great call. I yeah. forgot about that. Yeah. They did. If uh, the bra, remember, yeah. Sue Ellen Mischke's bra didn't fit. You can't put a bra on over clothes. It's got to fit like a glove. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> I remember him a little bit as a player. So you're old enough to remember some of the players? Yeah, and they'd, th they'd show some highlights, and... Uh, you, you'd see some of that on uh, the NFL films would have some stuff early on where they were still trying to uh, plug programming in on different places. You'd get some NFL films on Orenthal James Simpson. 
One of the most famous players of the 70s, Eric, right? Yeah. I mean, would you yeah. say? 14 you... games he rushed for 2,000 yards, I believe. That's pretty impressive. 14 games, 2,000 yards. I believe you're right about that because yeah. the season was still a 14-game season back right. then. It was about 77, 78 they switched that. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. It's darn right impressive. You know, it's funny. Back when, you... when the running back was king. Yes, that's true. Back when the running 50 years ago. Yurko, 1973. 14 games. OJ rushed for 2,003 yards. Yeah. He rushed for 143 yards a game, dude. Yeah, that's impressive. <laughs> how much? How many uh, rush per game in his career? 83.2 yards per game. He had he had three seasons where it was just over 105 rushing yards per. He had a, right. he had a 129 season, a 143 season, and a 107 season. He was doing that in 14 game seasons. You know, it's the highest average, right? All time career. So asking not yards per attempt, but yards per game? Yards per game. I'm going to guess it's either Jim Brown or Barry Sanders. It's Barry Sanders, and it could be Jim Brown. I haven't checked, but look at Barry Sanders. Okay. I know Barry Sanders is up there at, at 100 yards a game. It's like 99.9, maybe. Mm, is it? But you got to round up. You got to round up there. 99.8. Is it? Yeah, 99.8. Now look at James Brown. Type Come on. Top. Come on now. Jim Brown, not James Brown. James Brown, you get the uh, broadcaster. <laughs> or you get the singer, the performer. Yeah. Uh, 104.3. There I mean, you go. There's probably your winner. Jim Brown is probably yeah. your winner right yeah. there. Yeah, it's, it, yeah, I think he is. I think it's... Uh, it's in dark. Yeah. 104.3. Yeah. Oh, sweet Lord. Yeah. Pretty good, huh? Yeah. So, I mean, OJ was like this football star, this media star, this movie star. He was this larger-than-life person. I mean, he was fantastic. He was. Oh, sure. Before bigger it all life. went. Before... He was bigger than life. Yeah. yeah before it went. Before the world found out about, he like, flushed it. the dark side of right. OJ. The, the womanizer. The, the, yes. Right. Yes. The domestic abuse and right. what it ultimately led to the death, the senseless death, and then the extremely violent death of two people. You know, Chicago had a weird connection to it. Remember when he flew, well, he flew here? He flew here and he stayed at, uh, at the Hilton at the airport, wasn't right. it, York? Well, not the Hilton at the airport. It was right down the street. Oh, was it? I thought it yeah, was, it was like, at the Yeah, it, it's, it, it's almost like next to the new toll booth that they put up over there. Okay. Remember how they've been tearing them down and rebuilding yeah. them? Is it's that almost what it was? right there. It's off to the right-hand side, yeah. You know, Chicago had this weird connection to it in the days and the weeks that followed, and investigators were here looking for evidence and looking for things and wanted to know why he traveled here. And that was always kind of a weird thing for those of us that lived here that, like, it had a connection. And... Yurko summed it up perfectly with the word circus. Uh, it was, it sort of ushered in probably, um, I don't know, probably like an era of media and journalism that we're not all too proud of, but it's just the way it is today. It, that, that trial was sensationalized. It was played out in the media really for the first time. Cable news had become a big thing. Court TV was in its infancy. And, and they had, they seemingly had no control over that courtroom so it was judge and the things Ito, that Judge Ito. Right, it was yeah. Judge Ito, Marsha Clark, mm -hmm. Dowden, was that his name, Christopher Dowden? It was, uh, was it he was a prosecuting Chris attorney? Dowden sounds Chris, right. Christopher Dowden. It was definitely Marsha Clark was the lead, wasn't yeah. she? Yeah, yes, Marsha Clark. Chris and then Dowden on the other side, right. you had Kardashian. You had, you had Dershowitz. Yes, you did. Uh, they had a couple other guys representing him over on that side. Um, who was the most famous? Why am I blanking on his name? They sp the the one that they would spoof in Seinfeld years later. Yeah, I'm, which, yeah, I'm, I'm uh, for some reason I'm blank I'm blanking. I'm looking at him right I'm now. I'm looking. Of course, I'm looking at him with the glasses and the fancy yeah. suits. I can't believe I'm blanking on his name right now. You know, you mentioned Lancito. I mean, Jay Leno made a. You know, you talk about a guy's career exploding because of using what was being sensationalized in the media. The dancing Itos, remember, on the Jay Leno show. I mean, this was the world back then, and there yeah. was a lot less. You know, there weren't as many options, and you sort of, you couldn't get out of the way of what little uh, options we right. had in terms of where we could go for content. Isn't Everybody that, was sensationalized. Isn't that it. where Van Sustern got her start, too? Was I off think that you're trial? right. You guys yeah. are, are also the, like, one of the heydays of SNL. Johnny Cochran. Johnny Cochran. Thank you. Johnny Cochran. I don't know why I couldn't think of Johnny trial. Joe the Pizzuto, heyday of SNL. Like one of the, like, prime, like, if you go through the eras of SNL, one of the prime eras of SNL was during this trial. You know what's funny, Adam? I feel like, may, and maybe because of my age, I don't know. I, I don't, 
off the top of my head, Norm I... Norm McDonald... Well, well, well that, that's, was, a, that, that's true. ...was Norm. out there on Weekend Update yes. the oh, yeah. day he, he got acquitted and said murder is legal in L.A. today. Yeah, you're, you're, you bring up a good point. Norm eviscerated him yeah. weekly. Yeah. And that's why he was fired. Yeah. Yes. That's why Owen oh, yeah. Michaels got rid of him. Oh, the yeah. guys above him. Oh, Ever yeah. Saul or whoever was running the Yeah, because they were friends with O.J. Do yeah. you remember, Chris, can you... Can you find real quick the, I should have told you this right before the show started, Chris, I'm sorry. Can you find the uh, Norm joke that he made uh, at the ESPYs to Charles Woodson? Circa 90, what would that have been, 97, Yeah, I can find I just saw someone on social media. And, and I don't want yeah. to hear about, like, it's too soon, it's this and that. Uh, O.J. Simpson, uh, like Yurko said, whatever we once knew ago. about him, yeah. the fabulous football player, the media star, uh, O.J. Simpson was is a despicable to person. He yeah, I don't, know. I don't to want to hear it's too soon. I mean, I mean yeah. it's despicable. Uh, and we all know it. And and everybody does. So I don't expect much pushback. But I don't, you know, you could, oh, how could you guys play that on a day today <laughs> when the man died? Please. If the glove don't fit, you must quit from Mike. Uh, who said Mike that? Mike Joyce. <laughs> Mike Joyce. Yeah. So, Chris, see if I find that real quick. Because uh, Norm, yes, Norm made, I, I, I mean, constant constant jokes and and was satirical and and really smart and funny about the whole thing and so adam you're right i was gonna say i don't recall too much of you know what snl may have done in terms of spooking spoofing it via skits but norm uh made a a huge impact on the way it was perceived on some of the comedy and the satire around it Again, all the late night talk shows, um, and, and if you and at any point want to chime in today, I don't even know what like what there is really to to say about it, other than the way we've kind of reminisced on what a bizarre time it was, and the kind of media coverage that was sort of ushered in because it was so sensationalized, because he was such a celebrity. Um, you know, you're more than willing, uh, welcome to to share anything that you want about those days with us. Three one two three three two three seven seven six. We were talking about June seventeenth, nineteen ninety four, and thirty for thirty once did a whole episode on, on what happened the that day. Craziness of that day because it was the Bronco chase. There was, uh, you know, the 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 World Cup was kicking off here in Chicago. There was a bunch of stuff. Ken and Aurora remembered some of that. He wanted to talk about it. What's going on, Ken? Not much. How are you guys doing today? Great, man. Good. I got a story that will be anybody's. It was my 19th birthday, and I was about to go up on stage at the Admiral Theater, and we were all watching the chase. Wait, is this so you're talking about the 17th and 94? Yeah. So you turned 19. 19 was, I love it. You're at the Admiral Theater on the northwest side. Yes, Not I that was. Not it is or anything, but I mean, this is classic. Okay, so you're going on stage for your 19th birthday, and that's what people were watching? You, all of us, including myself, in the gentleman's none of us club. were watching like, like anything the dancers, that was going on. And the dancers and everything, all everybody. Yes, they had they had the chase on. It was fantastic. It was hilarious. We could, I mean, we couldn't keep our eyes off the television. Well, and it was also yeah. like you know, and Kenny, thanks, buddy. They were getting ready to play the NBA finals. I remember exactly where I was. Excuse me, ma'am. Could you move out of the way? I know that's that's classic. I was in Green uh, Bay. Yurko's in the league in Green Bay. I had just graduated high school. It was the summer after my senior year. We were all going off to college. I remember exactly where I was the night of the chase that, that, that summer night. I was at Lori Windsor's house with a bunch of us. Okay. No, stop it, you're I said okay. <laughs> I was at Lori Windsor's house. I was with my good friend Sue Odenkirk, who's Bob's younger sister. Right. John Roberts, who you know, who used to work with us here sure, at absolutely. ESPN Chicago on, the, on, the, on the, the digital side of things on the website. Um... My, uh, my friend Chris and Lukowski, I mean, I remember we were all together. We were watching it. Sean Frazier, we were watching this right. happen, and we couldn't believe it. We couldn't believe it. And NBC's trying to find a way to play its coverage of Knicks. What would that? That would have been Knicks and Rockets, right, Yurko? Yeah, yeah it was Knicks, Knicks and, and Rockets. Rockets. Game five. It was game five. Game five of the 94 NBA Finals, Houston the Knicks. The Rangers had won the Stanley Cup that summer. They were having, I believe, the parade. Ticker tape parade on Broadway. In Manhattan. They're getting ready for game five of the NBA Finals between the New York Knicks and the Rockets. The World Cup was kicking off here in Chicago at Soldier Field. With Oprah Winfrey and Bill Clinton presenting everything. That's right. 
Look at these guys. <laughs> Rocco. I know. I, I know exactly who it is. That's Rocco. Um, the World Cup. I think Arnold Palmer might have been playing his last ever round at the U.S. Open. His last ever competitive round. Yes. At the U.S. Open. U.S. Open. 100% correct. And in the midst of all of it, one of the mo legitimately most famous people in America at the time is being chased down a highway in Los Angeles. You forgot about Ken, Ken Griffey Jr. What was the, the Griffey time? Tying Bruce's record of most home runs 30 before June 30th in the team's 65th game of the 94 Major League Baseball season. I don't even remember that. Yeah. Like, wow. Yeah. Why? Well, I'm, I'm on the Wikipedia page. It's for in the June documentary. June 17th, 1994. It yeah, it's I in remember that. that. Yeah. Because they show Griff, I think he wow. hits a home run in Kansas City into the fountain, and they're talking oh, about how yeah, 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 this summer right. is going to be an incredible summer for for this chase and how great Ken Griffey Jr. Yeah, is. Lockout. And you remember. And that lo lockout a few uh, months Arnie, later. Cause... Arnie Palmer and O.J. Simpson filmed a Hertz commercial together. Yeah. Oh, did they? Yeah, which played oh. during the watch call it. So, you know, if you're old enough to remember it, and again, I was going into college. Yurko was in the league. He was up in Green Bay. Chris and Adam are old enough to remember it. Um, I mean, it's got it's 30 something years. We have a lot of young listeners that weren't even alive. Think about that, yeah. you guys. I mean, yeah. it's 30 years. I remember ago. watching. I lived in overseas. I remember watching oh, wow. the uh, the verdict in Saudi Arabia. Really? Yeah, it was live. They. I mean, obviously, it was live everywhere. But I remember yeah. watching it over in Saudi Arabia. It's, yes. I think it's really tough for a young person to understand how limited our availability to media was at the time. So this was the only thing in the newspaper and on the news and on television at all times for the better part of what, a year? A year and a half. year and a half. That's the point was I was the trying to make. the only thing that we consumed. Chris is right. That's the point I was trying to make. Like, there were so the, the, our options were so much more limited, and this thing was everywhere. It was sensationalized everywhere. You go and to then, the grocery store, every single magazine, yeah. when you're checking out, was something about the OJ trial. Everything. Every single magazine that's there when you're checking out the grocery store was about OJ. And like I said, you had late night and then like shows like SNL and comedy shows and comedians being very irreverent and satirical about it and making comedy off of it. And you had like this courtroom drama. Uh, splashed um, uh, uh, or, or, or broadcast on TV constantly. You had uh, Johnny Cochran, who was larger than life, and used that to his advantage, and that defense team used every bit of that to its advantage. Racial tensions were high. I mean, it, it, it's... When it comes to TV coverage, it really jump-started the breaking news, 24-hour news cycle of coverage. Yeah. Like, before then, CNN, at least from my perspective, wasn't something that people were obsessively watching for breaking news at all hours of the day. And then Court TV started up. Yeah, the, the, it was. It ushered in a, a like I said, probably a, a somewhat yeah, less yeah. savory uh, aspect of the media world. You want the uh, norm joke? Yeah, play Here the norm go. joke. This is from the ESPYS. Was it? Would it have been like 98, 97 or ninety eight? Yeah, it had to have been because uh, whenever Woodson had, whenever Charles Woodson had yeah. won the Heisman. So th this was at the ESPYS. This was Norm McDonald at the ESPYS. And there's Charles Woodson. Yeah, what a season he had. He became the first defensive player to win the Heisman Trophy. And congratulations, Charles. That is something that no one can ever take away from you. Unless you kill your wife and a waiter, in which case... I'll bet they're out. Just a word of advice. Incredible. Incredible. No, rest in peace, Norm MacDonald. Incredible. I mean, <laughs> and just scorched earth. All right, we got a bunch of calls. We can take some calls on this. We'll, we'll, we got a lot of other things to do today. I mean, we're not going to spend the whole show. It just, it was a very significant time in American history. Uh, OJ, thankfully, has sort of just kind of disappeared into the ether in recent years. I know he tried to make a go of it on social media a little bit when he got out of prison. Um, I, I don't, you know, know how successful that really was at the end of the day. Again, like he, like I said, he had kind of just sort of disappeared into the, into the ether. OJ's dead at 76.